All right, all right, everybody. So we are back. Last session, you all set out from Fort Belurian, from Belurian Landing, after speaking with Liara Porter, the captain of the Flaming Fist stationed out here in Chult. Um, you all had some ex expectations as to how you might view her, but she turned out to be quite the pragmatist, um, seeing you all as wonderful opportunities for her to spare some of her own men and tasks that she needed doing, and was willing to pay you quite well in... What's the best way to put this? Rights to the forest. Um, saying that if you would do some things for her, she would give you a full charter of exploration, meaning that not only would you not have to worry about Flaming Fist patrols bothering you in the forest, but you would have full claim to anything that you found out there. Um, so after going over some of the tasks that she had available for you, you all decided to take a little boat ride, heading aboard the Serpent's Fury and setting out to the far southern reaches of the Cholton Peninsula to investigate a bay called Shiku Bay and the village that lies within the bay. The last expedition that the Flaming Fist sent to this place met in disaster. No one knows exactly what happened, only that the crew and all aboard the ship met a very unfortunate and rather loud end. Um, so, seeing this is a perfect opportunity to send some, send some adventurers on, she commissioned a new ship to take you all there, except this time to not land at Shiku Landing, at Shiku Bay, but to drop you all off somewhere safe far from the shore, far from the city, that you could then trek to, investigate, and then report back what you had found there, possible um, camp locations for the Flaming Fist, if it was a place that was that would be worth having an expedition sent to. So, you all spent the next several days at sea, aboard the Serpent's Fury, meeting the crew, learning how to sail, doing all kinds of other stuff. Um, namely, meeting Lyrian, Kethra, Jax, the main crew of the ship, Lyrian being the captain, Kethra the first mate, and Jax the um, quartermaster, and of course, Grumhawk Stonebelly, the ship's cook, who was very impressed by Salazar's culinary abilities. But eventually you all did make your way to, Sh to Shiku Bay, and that is where we are now. You all are just about to make... Anchor in the bay. So apologies for how long this map takes to load. We'll try to have switching between back and forth this one as infrequent as possible. So many hexagons, man. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey. Alright, everybody. So. The Serpent's Fury makes its way into, into the bay a little bit at a time, and you very quickly determine what happened here. Shiku Bay is a volcanic wasteland. At least the eastern portion of it is. As you all sail into the bay, um... Captain Lyrian looks over and says, we are not getting anywhere near that shore. And as she says so, the reason for this decision is emphasized by a volcanic rock shooting up out of the mountain nearby and crashing down into the water um, about 100 feet or so off ashore of Shiku Bay. A massive volcano seems to have erupted here and blasted most of the landscape on the eastern shore of the bay. Zoom you all in so you can see a little better here. Massive eruption seems to have blasted most of what was of what was remaining here. Um, you can see lava flows snaking their way down from the mountain, and some of them bisecting directly into the city itself, while others break down across the beach and into the water from there. You see that the entire eastern shore is a smoky, hazy wasteland. So, Captain Lyrian says, we will drop you all on the western shore, and you can trek from there. We have business in the in the bay north of here. We will be back in 10 days to pick you up. I trust your recon won't take any longer than that. Hopefully not. I suppose we will find out together. She says, we'll be back in 10 days to pick you all up. 
be right here, and she points to a spot on the uh, western banks. Be right there for retrieval, or walk home. Could walk we... home? <laughs> that is so many steps. <laughs> you maybe make a plan in case we need to delay a couple days or something? She leans against the railing of the deck. I'm listening. Um, maybe we can send some sort of signal to you if we need a couple extra days. Uh, I do have a, as long as it's within range of my familiar to actually get to you, I could deliver a message that way if need be. She says, very well. We will... Hopefully it's not, hopefully it's not needed, but... <laughs> she nods. It's very well then. Now... She looks around to her crew and says, Porter did say that one of my crew needed to accompany you ashore to make sure that you were all on the up and up and didn't try to disappear into the jungle. She looks around. Jax? And he said, ja the, uh, the ship sorcerer, she goes with him and says, I'm not going over there. See what happened to the last ones. She looks around, looks down towards the shield dwarf who, like, averts her gaze and kind of looks away. Ah. Sans has a very, very sinking, big sinking feeling in his stomach. <laughs> uh, a pale-skinned woman with blue eyes and short brunette hair is just going to be silently raising her hand. So, the captain looks back towards you, Vera, and says, perfect, we'll send the new girl. She says, she says, uh, Sarah? Clara? No, it's, uh, it's Vera. It's, that's what my name is. Get on up here. You can be the envoy of the ship out on this expedition. <coughs> yeah, I can, yeah. It's better than staying up here all, uh, day. Settled, then. You'll accompany them ashore, and, who knows, maybe they can help you out with the, uh, Issues you've been dealing with or looking into. So, yeah. here, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey guys, it's Hannah from the Wednesday group. I'm going <laughs> to be playing a pale skinned human woman with short brunette hair, a little bit curly at the end. Um, her name is going to be Vera. And on Sunday games or the Tomb of Annihilation games, I'm going to be playing a Tempest cleric of Umberly. Nice. Cool. Awesome. So, yeah. So, let's go ahead and just describe everybody that uh, Vera would see as she looks over this motley group about to make landfall. Uh, Mossrat, why don't you go ahead and describe your character? Uh, Moss, we can't hear you. There you go. Oh, okay. Uh, Mossrat is a teeny little goblin. Uh, in scavenge armor uh, with a shock of white hair and like lavender purple skin. She's got big old eyes and big old ears and is probably chewing on a piece of wood, to be honest. <clears throat> a railing, a barrel, a seam. It, there's no telling. Can you <laughs> not eat on the barrel wood, please? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Salazar, why don't you go and describe your character? Uh, Salazar is a small uh, kobold um, in bright red robes pulled up over his head, with just his little nose sticking out. Um, with me carries a staff with what looks like a stolen torch of some sort strapped to the end of it. That um, when he's fighting, he'll actually light up and use to bring out his pet sizzle. It's a small flaming dragon. Uh, but he's a wildfire sorcerer. Badger. Nice. And Banth? So Banth is a Hadozi. Um, I picture him as like a, a mix between a flying squirrel and a monkey. Um, so he has membranes that help him glide. And he is a rogue. Nice, and a scene. Uh, 
a seam it normally appears like a from a average height slimly built human of what we would view as some form of Middle Eastern descent uh, he does wear he's wear more fully robe the like of the leather armor that he has for this expedition uh, a couple of daggers on him. Ruth isn't exactly normal human, as mechanically he is a reborn. Oh my god. And is and is a undead and he is a um, a warlock with a undead patron. He's got a mummy. Oh. Mm -hmm. Damn it. Excuse me? <laughs> He's got a sugar mummy. Mm -hmm. No comment. <laughs> Essentially. His warlock patron. Okay, so with that, Captain Lyrian does set you out, out on a boat. The quartermaster Jax will row you all to shore. You all load up into a rowboat and make your way to shore. Deposited on the west banks of Shilku Bay. Um, if you were to look into the forest, you wouldn't really know that anything too crazy was happening here. But as soon as you turn around, you would see the volcanic hellscape that is the eastern shore of this place. So, Jax wishes you all luck, deposits you on the banks, and heads back to the ship. So, you all are currently here. What do y'all want to do? Uh, Moss Rock. <laughs> I just want to point out that is an adorable <laughs> Moss Rock photo. I saw yeah. that. <laughs> uh, so Moss Rock is going to do, like, be on her, like, like all fours, like, snuffling in the, the, the dirt, like, investigating. She's trying to pick up a Let's pick up a trail. Okay. Trail of what? We don't know. Right. <laughs> um, go ahead and make a uh, make a perception check. Guidance. Can I help? Oh yay! Uh, how how right do you how do you help Mossrat sniff the sand? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be looking for actual cracks, not sniffing. Okay. Like, get a little is... if I so see. survival check for you then. 16 with the guidance. Oh. Nice. Hmm. Okay. Balzar definitely doesn't point it out, just sort of shifts Mossrot to catch it. <laughs> I get Okay. So, um, Mossrot, you smell something almost vaguely familiar. Um, with a 16, you can tell that it's possible, it's possible that other kobolds other than Salazar frequent this beach. Now, <laughs> Salazar, you can confirm that by tracks and um, old campsites. I'm talking like, that looks like they've been abandoned and struck for days, if not longer. Um, but it does look like the beaches are, regular, are frequented by kobolds. She's sniffing the tracks, sniffing Sal, sniffing the tracks, sniffing Sal. You've been here before. Can assure you, I have not. Suspicious. Um, now, if you were looking for your destination, all you have to do is look across the bay at the ruined city. Mm -hmm. Well, I believe that we can tell what occurred to the city. Do we wish to investigate and see if there is anything of... Value? Or importance, one of... Or importance, knowledge, any of the three. I mean, I'm with the goblin. I want something out of this. I don't know if it's a treasure, but... Mm. High fives. High five. I mean, we should probably start making our way that way, at least. Yes. It's three days? Four days travel just to get there? Mm, possibly less, because this is on a coast where it's traveled a little more. 
as opposed to going straight through the jungle areas. Yeah, I think it's like five days, because it's five hexes. Just Well, no, it might be three or four, actually. Yep, yep. It does take, it does, uh, traveling along the beach does go a little bit easier, a little bit faster than traveling through the dense jungle. So, you can get through about two hexes per day, assuming you don't run into any major issues. Okay. So. Let's go ahead. Um, if you all are going to be making your way across the, along the beach down to Shiku Bay, um, we can go ahead and roll up a day of encounters. Okay. All right, yeah. here we go. I'm going to be watching for any obvious traps that I might recognize. Okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, as you all make your way across the beach, maybe about three, four hours into your walk, it's rather nice, you know, it's a beautiful day out. No major storms on the horizon. It does begin to rain just a bit, but it's a nice light misting. Almost cooling. But as you all travel, you see that through the cloud cover, one cylinder of light kind of comes down. And there is about... Um, there are... There is a small clutch, a, a rather large group of enormous lizards, the smallest of which spanning about 10 feet from tail to snout, the largest almost up to 20 feet long, all just kind of laying across this patch of sunlight, sunning themselves in the only available sunlight they can find. They cover the beach from one end to the other. What do y'all do? Salzar, make a move. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? They're scaly. You're scaly. Yeah. Go tell them to move. I don't know. Use one of your famous Copal of pickup <sighs> lines. I don't know. That is incredibly offensive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do something, but not because you told me to. Hey, Druid, go do animal handling. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Go do druid things, druid. Can I, uh, cast Speak with Animals? Sure. And then, uh... I'm gonna call out to them from a reasonable distance. Far enough back that I don't think they could dash up and eat me. <laughs> okay, so why don't you... Show me exactly how you're going to do this, Salazar. Well, dance. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> he didn't need to change the map. <laughs> didn't didn't die though. Do an encounter. Oh my god. Um. <laughs> Look what you did. You told me to. You could have <laughs> just gone around. Yeah. He listened to me. <laughs> okay, that's already this, far then. too close. <laughs> you can go ahead and back up. It's already far too close. <laughs> you all can put your... We're not initiative or anything, so you all can put yourself where you think you are on the map. I'm thinking, like, that's as close as I'd possibly get. That's already pushing it. Uh, up at the top right. Oh, oh, hi. I went the wrong way. Hold on. <laughs> Just gone around. We didn't need to do this. Well, you haven't done anything yet. Yeah, I know. Busy. We're already committed to this. I mean, if you <laughs> want us to stealth, we can stealth. I have disadvantage with a zero modifier. Oh, do you have heavy armor on, Vera? I, I believe I do. Okay. So you spent most of your time on a nice, cool sailing boat, but you will very quickly learn that once you are away from the sea, it's still nice and cool here, but it's already starting to get a little hot in that armor. Oh, God. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> You're fine for now, but you quickly realize that it may be a problem if you were, you know, have to go into a jungle or anything. Yeah, I was going to say, I have chainmail on. This might be a problem. 
heat stroke, but with jazz pants. <laughs> yeah. Fancy so heat stroke. So you guys are going to get closer than me. I mean, um, just in case, right? I mean... I mean, that's okay, fine. The happy music is still playing, everybody. It's fine. Yeah, see? Say something. So Tell them I'll shout out to him. Uh, good morning. Oh, I would have said something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they just all spin. <laughs> all of them turn to look at you. None of them what? make a move. None of them <laughs> do anything. Horrifying. So, Mossrat skitters away a little bit, and one of them kind of takes a step closer, looking at Mossrat. I'm something adorable. You're a snack. Yeah. So you're a snack. <laughs> so they look up towards you Salazar and after you said good morning um and they the one the one in the front says our son you can keep the sunspot uh, we're not here to take that from you um we're just trying to get to the village with the people on the other side of the bay Hey, uh, can you ask them if we can go around them instead of, you know, going through them? Oh. Hey, why is that one moving? Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, this is not going to be good. So, Salazar, go ahead and make an animal handling check. You can do so at advantage since you are speaking to them. Um, the one that you're speaking to, though, would say it would look across the bay. And you would see it look at the ruins and look back towards you. No people. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, better get my glaive out. I'm getting my warhammer out. Right. So the one that you were speaking to, Salazar, takes a couple steps closer. Says, "Hungry." Mm, we are not food. The one over here that just moved closer. Kind of makes a regurgitation, Blech! and you see like half of a half of like a skeletal body come out. Hmm. One of them says, oh. "Hungry." Very well then. This may have been a mistake. Well. Oh, there goes the happy music. <laughs> I mean, it's just a bunch of frogs, right? I mean, ten foot lizards, ten foot lizards. Well, Where initiative, we everybody. Good try, Salazar. Good try. I tried. Oh, I need to get my rolls out from private. I just realized that. Oh, yeah. Go for um... it. So, this is why I normally say we could just not. <laughs> we could just not. <laughs> um... sure, I'll to go talk to the lizards because I'm a kobold. <laughs> this is on you guys. What do you mean? I'd be their ruler. No, 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 no. I will be the king of the kobolds, not the lizards. What's the difference? Why wouldn't you want to like tame the lizard so you could be the king? Moss Rock's just that that meme. Well, I guess bitch is gonna die tonight. <laughs> How do I have a zero dexterity and I beat these lizards? What? <laughs> okay, we're actually going to roll for them again and give them the low. Oh the lower number because several of them are still sleeping. Okay. Salazar. The lizards look very hungry and a couple of them have begun to stir and move towards you all. Uh, I think we should run personally. <clears throat> so what I am going to do is cast Entangle. Ooh. It's a 20 foot cube, which I believe should be able to catch those front three. I'm doing my math right. Looks like you get two of them. Oh, oh looks like, there we go, we got three. Perfect. So we're gonna do that and see if we can tie up the couple in the front that are gonna come running for us. Okay. Um, so that's going to be a 
DC 13 strength save. Or be restrained. Okay, okay. That is just seaweed and bushes and stuff kind of spring out and start wrapping these things up. Nice. What was the DC? 13? 13. Restrained is the condition? Yes. Okay, two of them fail. Awesome. The ones in the back. <laughs> better than nothing. And then we are going to... As a bonus action, bring out Sizzle. Right here in front of this one. Okay. Which will be a, another... It'll be a deck save for some damage. Dex save result is a 12. He will take the damage. Uh, give me a second to check. I think it's 2d6 fire. I think it is 2d6, so I remember off the top of my head. Yeah, it is. Alright. Darn it. Five right. fire. Good job, and Sizzle. Then we gonna run. Oh, are we running away? Salazar's I mean, running away. <laughs> it appears you guys, to be. You can do what you want. <laughs> I mean, that's up to you. I can do either, but I was going to drop a fog cloud on there. You guys can do what you want. I'm going to put some distance. You see yeah. On, to uh, on top of the uh, entangle, I'm going to drop a uh, fog cloud. Okay, nice, Just nice, nice. Smoke bomb. And... We're going to have to cast them on the way back. I mean, we'll be better equipped, you know? I'm not going to get eaten. We can go through the jungle. And then I am going to go into the thick of it, and I am going to end my turn. Moss Rot? Moss Rot's just like, there's shit in there that can eat us too! <laughs> <laughs> At least we can see this. <laughs> Ash action. Gonna run away with these fucking... Whatever. Oh, I don't want to do dash. I can just get up here with her. Okay. I'm just gonna bitch about it the whole time. Fine, but I'm gonna complain the whole time. <laughs> um, I yes. guess I'm not gonna rage. I'm just gonna hide. In oh, nimble escape. But I hide in the bush like a goblin. You can you can't complain when you're dead. I can't die. That's ridiculous. No. <laughs> All right. Next. <laughs> Go ahead and make a stealth check. Oh, cool. Sure, yes. I can do that. My stealthy little bean. Okay. You find yourself to be sufficiently hidden. Man. <laughs> uh, well, I guess if we're running, I will... Uh, we just left the steam. <laughs> <laughs> This seems on brand. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't abandon you. You yeah, just you went just... last. I mean, <laughs> did you guys abandon him in avertance? Just saying. I, really... I have saved him before. <laughs> and I'm done. Okay. No okay. attacks, man? Uh, nope. Okay. No attacks. I see. Uh... Well, I'm going to need, before I finish your course, since everyone has taken off, uh... <laughs> oh, good heaven, what's that I forgot? Need a 10-foot radius circle. What are you casting? That, uh, shatter. Shatter? And I want to try to co collect these three here on the bottom, including that one who is not entangled. Okay. I've got a template for that. It's <laughs> tiny. That's a little see. small. There see we go. See my bottom bigger. There we go. I'm All gonna right. avoid commenting on that ace because, goddamn. <laughs> Jeez, they've gone feral. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. It's just what you do with it. I don't 
see a way to get three of them. It looks like you can just get two. Oh. Yeah, make sure I get this first one then. Okay. The one who's not entangled. Okay, DC damage. Um, it'll be a DC 12, and let us... Fire this little bad boy off. For 10 thunder damage. Right. Uh, DC 12 con okay. save. As just the sad stuff just uh, rubs and just sucks back in suddenly from an implosion there. Nice. Okay, they both succeed, but you can hear a lot of commotion going on behind that fog. Um, it is it is rather dramatic. You hear quite a few of them begin to screech and scatter. <laughs> okay, and with that being done, since I am, since everyone has up and left me, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, so after all of that, you have taken away their son. You have tied several of them up, and now you've blown up them. You've blown them up twice. <laughs> I mean, I believe they understand that they have bitten off more than they can chew. They scatter and begin fleeing into the into the jungle. <clears throat> oh come on! So these ones want none of it. Dash. Uh, this one's going to try to escape. What's the DC to escape from the entangle? 13. It does escape. So they are going to flee. They're just a bunch of animals that thought they had an easy meal and were very wrong. Do you all pursue or do you allow them to flee? Let them go. Yeah, there you go. go. Okay. Yeah, you better run. <laughs> They're moss. We all running. Those things could eat you in one bite. <laughs> you all left me there. <laughs> be faster. You're fine. Everybody... I didn't want to be launched. But did you die? Fair point, too. Did you die? It happens occasionally. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, that's rough. <laughs> Did I make a poor choice by coming down here with you, Lot? They're right, though. The sun is nice over here. Mod is sunbathing in the beach. Remind me, Salazar, are you still packed to capacity almost? A little bit. She's just gonna run up, jump off the rock, and just tip you over. <laughs> and then run away again. <laughs> oh. Just picturing him like a turtle on his back on his pack. This is what I get for getting a tent. <laughs> Rick, you sit down before you fall? Sit down. Oh. Oop, that's not my character. I'm trying to move a seam around. My bad. <laughs> well, I'm, uh... She's gonna come up here and smash that crab. Uh, nice. And just eat it. <laughs> Alright, so you can not save those for later? <laughs> just... Just, like, bits of shell and, like, crab meat and gristle just hanging out of her face. I have reached the end of the map. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. So, several more hours of travel along the beach go by. And you do figure that you're about... You should be getting into the less pleasant places of the beach, into the eastern portions of the beach, by the next morning. Something I'd like to point out is before they tried to eat us, they said there's no people there. 
They did. I'm not gonna know and then Salazar rolled double it. sevens. Hit. But yes, yes, they did. They did, in fact, say that there was no people there. So there is no people in that village that we're going to. But we need to know what happened to them. Yeah. Well, I oh. think it from the fiery landscape that it was most likely a volcano. Volcano? <laughs> but <laughs> the question is, is was it set off naturally or was there some other means that caused it to erupt? We just have to find something interesting so we can get our dinosaur. Let's keep our priorities in order, people. Dinosaur. Oh, I'm on board. I'm just pointing out to you guys. Don't oh, yeah, expect yeah, yeah. to find any friendly villagers when we get there. Oh, oh yeah. I'm. Oh, even if there were people alive, that's not a guarantee they would have been friendly in any case. I mean, yeah. It's true. It could have been you, you, and you alive when I pointed Salazar, Banth, Nas. <laughs> no one's going to eat me. This is why I run. I do the eating. Thank you. I do the cooking. So that was all that yelling about in the kitchen I heard, or what was it, like a, two weeks ago? That yeah, was I'm you? sorry. Your guys' cook sucks. I had to teach him a few things. <laughs> I was, that was my first trip with the cook. I, I mean, how was I supposed to know? He, he was very, very bad at his job. I mean, for a cook, for a uh, privateer cook, it could have been worse. I mean, I guess nobody died, so yeah. it couldn't have been that bad. At least, like, at least it wasn't like the guy near uh, Baldur's Gate. Uh, apparently, there was food poisoning. Uh, the guy I was with, but you know, thankfully, I was never sick from that chef, so. Anyway, should we get it, be heading down? We gotta find this thing for your, uh, this mm -hmm. quote-unquote dinosaur yes. for the rest of you. All right, so the rest of the day does pass by without any major event, and it becomes evening and time to make camp for the night. So. Stand by. Standing. Wait, is that wine? Yo, it's a party. It is, in fact. Who brought a bottle of wine? Probably <laughs> me. Probably. <laughs> <Right. laughs> so it definitely was a moss. Moss drinks by the cask. <laughs> <laughs> So Moss Rot would like to point out that there are perfectly lovely hollow logs here, and she's going to that's where she's gonna spend her night inside the log. Nice. I wanna see if we can catch some fish for dinner. Alright, fantastic. Go ahead and make a survival check. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I get a big fish and it pulls me to sea. <laughs> That's what happens on an out one. I figured. <laughs> yeah. So. Did you catch your fish? No bites today, Salazar. Yeah. Worth a try. Always. So. Moss is going to watch him fishing. And then pull a schmeagol and just try to, like, catch one with her bare face. <laughs> Make a survival <laughs> check. I'm just watching on and just pure... But she's, she's trying to... She thinks she's helping. I'm, like, genuinely... Oh, see, no good. <laughs> <laughs> she comes up with a crab attached to her ear. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, everybody. What is everybody's passive perception? 14. No boy, no. 15. Uh, okay. Mine is uh, lower than that. Actually, I do need to get a icon for the alpha familiar that I summoned. 
Okay. Um, oh wait, that reminds me. I need to do a. I need to mid journey a, a spiritual weapon. I just remembered. Oh nice. We can mid journey our spiritual weapons. On a yeah. ride next week. <laughs> and a seam. You need an owl. Yes, please. It is done. Okay, everybody. Excellent. So, I'm sorry, who had the highest passive perception? Probably Banth at 15. Banth at 15? Okay. No. I have 15 as well. Yeah, okay. I don't have 15. I only yeah, have 15. I have 14, if okay, that makes so sense. Okay, so Salazar at 15. Okay. Fantastic. Oh. Everything's nice. It looks great. Um, wonderful evening on the beach. Who's on first watch? Um, we'll do two watches. Uh, who's on first? Who's on second? I'll, I'll, I'm willing. What's on third? I can I'll, do one. You yeah, will I'll, find out. Uh, I will be on first watch if people want me to be. Okay. I can do second. Okay. Um, oh. And I'm going to burn a block of incense for the night so we can sleep yes. comfy. Okay. I'll be Go a third. And, uh, only two watches. Oh, it's only two. Okay, yeah, got it. Yeah, only two. Um, and it's, it's clear? Like, the weather is clear? It is. Okay. Okay. So, Asim, I need you to make a perception check for your first night. I don't like how you deleted and restarted initiative. Well, I just cleared it. It restarts itself. But fair. Fair. Uh, does my familiar get to buy, try as well? Since I have it out looking as well? Sure. Uh, what did you do? D20 plus 3. 15. Okay. okay. So, Asim, kind of keeping an eye out, looking around, mainly focusing on the beach, the water, looking back towards the jungle. Every now and then you look back and it looks like one of the plants very beautiful flower. There a second ago, or doesn't seem to have been there a second ago, you kind of brush it off, but you don't notice it's slowly creeping its way closer and closer to the camp. A flower, or rather three flowers, diverging off of a central stalk, is slowly creeping its way inward towards camp towards Vera and Mossrot, a pair of them. Does it help if I'm in the log? <laughs> in the log? Yeah, like, I'm in the log. I'm sleeping, like, um, toward the fire. Okay. Um. So, these two flowers kind of creeping their way out of the jungle seem you do not notice them until they are right on top of Vera. Uh, I will yell out. Unfortunately, you're just a split second too late. We are going to roll initiative. These two little flowers kind of lean in towards Vera. They're orange, the orange one of them kind of leaning out, and it kind of poofs out this little spray of pollen. Vera, you wake up to this flower just in your face. And he saves on G. Yes. <laughs> um, so I do need you to make a constitution saving throw. Uh, okay. You wake up, and then immediately fall unconscious. Oh, 
Oh, lovely. Bye, Vera. It then kind of yeah, nice lashes out at you with its red, with its red face, with its red flower, and snags up in some of your armor. Can't penetrate. And then, finally... Okay. <laughs> And then, after one of the flowers is all tangled up in your armor, the other one kind of just sprays out this sap everywhere. Um, you cannot succeed on the dexterity saving throw, so you all see Vera's armor start to sizzle. And with that... Banth. Oh, I just you wake up... You wake up to this scene, a pair of flowers looming over Vera. She is unconscious and is now sprayed with this sap that seems to be sizzling off of her armor. I completely forgot there's no crafting in D&D. Oh my god. <laughs> what do you do, man? I will... Um, which one did, is uh, snared up in her armor? This one right here. Okay. I will take a short bow attack at it. I'll Eight give you goes. My yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you want to take my session, I'll that take certainly it. hits. Right, save me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, Bant. Your arrow catches it squarely in one of its fronds, one of its flower heads, and it spears it straight backwards back into the forest. Nice. That's me. Moss? In the log? Moss is going to skitter out of the log. Uh, see that Vera is in danger, and she would like to rage, please. Nice. Uh, uh, so with that rage, we have a one. Okay. Shadowy tendrils. <laughs> Latch around me. Each creature of my choice I can see within 30 feet must succeed a con saving throw or take 1d12 necrotic damage. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. I also gain 1d12 temporary hit points. Woo! It does get a 3 on that save. So take 1d12 before I even touch you. Len. <laughs> oh, one. Oh, oh, oh. And then she's going to Actually, I think I can get it from where I am. Yep. Yeah. Glave it. Where's my people opener? There's there. Is. Is it ten hit? Ten hits. It's just a flower. <laughs> Eight points. Okay, you lop off the orange head of this flower. Kind of flops onto the ground. You can see it kind of trying to reach tendrils out towards you, but then bleh, goes limp. Salazar, wake up! <laughs> Where is he? He's by the shore. He's by the water. Oh, okay. All right, Salazar. He fell asleep while he was fishing. <laughs> so he's gonna snap away, carrying all the commotion. Drop his fishing pole that he had, and go running up the beach here. And then I think this is. Worth We are going to cast Flaming Sphere. Okay. And make a giant fireball that we're going to slam into this plant here. Okay. Wait, wait what? Flaming Sphere. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, please not quite. Oh. Wow, double ones. So that's a DC 13 deck save. Dex save result is... 12. Takes two fire damage. <laughs> and promptly dies. <laughs> uh, Thera, are you okay? She snores loudly. Moss might not want to spend too long next to that fireball. Uh, 
Right. Can you dismiss it since it's dead? Uh, I'm gonna spend the next minute. It's up actually, just clearing back, like <laughs> just burning out the forest. Solid fifteen it. feet from the forest. Um. Ah, ah yes, druid move. Burn the forest. <laughs> Wildfire druid. That sounds about fucking right. Yeah. I, um, no, I love it. Salazar, roll a d100, please. Oh my. Oh, I mean, God. you're doing a not so controlled burn here, so. Okay. It doesn't spread it uncontrollably. That's good. Yeah, that I is good. God, if I was unconscious and you were burning the forest down. We're just making sure there's no more of them. It's fine. Can moths wake her up? Like. Mm. Just let her sleep. She'll feel better in the morning. So poisoned for one hour. While poisoned this way, the target is unconscious. Uh, Vera, you can you, you actually do wake up. Um, every minute you get to make a con save, so eventually you would wake up. Okay. <clears throat> so after a few minutes, you would regain consciousness. Let's find out. I, I, uh, I probably would not after that one minute, but eventually, yeah. Okay. Alright. Your would-be attacker is lying in a heap next to you. Several of its uh, flowery heads knocked off. Why am I getting Vietnam War flashbacks to Wednesday? <laughs> oh, right, another plant. Oh, no. <laughs> Your worst enemy. It, they are. <laughs> I can see Rot being like, look, Vera. Ooh, I'm a scary plant. Just like waving the like petals around. I'm going to flip you off and then just move over here and sleep. <laughs> Would I be able to identify what kind of plant this was? Uh, yeah, make a nature check. I have a herbalism kit. Could I use that instead? Because I have a negative to nature. Kind of druid are you? <laughs> the Wait, best what? one. <laughs> Wait, what? The okay. best one. Stand what? by. He is, nature? he is a druid without nature or animal handling. Excuse me? <laughs> oh. He's our favorite druid. He's our favorite. All right. Um, so the kit contains a variety of instruments such as clippers, mortar and pestle, pouches and vials used by herbalists. I don't think this helps you identify plants. Damn. It was worth a try. Do you I have, have to identify it to use it in, like, I have medicine. Weapons? Yeah, you can use it to, like, make people go you take You want me to try to get you some poison out of this? Yeah. <laughs> I could give you guidance. So okay. yeah, that is that, that is, is real nature. that is real interesting because like you don't you you can't like identify it but you some but you can figure out how to make poison out of it. So the fact that it sprayed a sprayed a a, a pollen at Vera and knocked her out is enough to tell you that it certainly has some sort of poisonous properties. So I am trading medicine if that also helps. Okay, um, so what you could do is you could try to um, you could try to extract whatever toxin is in these flowers with your herbalism kit. All right, Moss seems pretty excited about that, so I'll go for that. I'll give you that. <coughs> Have a plus That'd three. That be a wisdom. Uh, it would be Four. yes, wisdom with your herbalism kit is fine. All right. For 15. a total of fifteen with the guidance. Fifteen. Okay. So with 15, I'll say that you can effectively dissect and remove the toxins from one of the three heads. There is an orange blossom, a yellow blossom, and a red blossom. Which one do you try to extract from? I don't remember which did what, but I don't think Salazar would have seen anyway. He was asleep. Uh, Let's go I with the, the yellow one. The orange one was unconscious. The red one was lowering AC, and I don't know what the yellow one was. We're doing the yellow one. Okay. So, you're able to extract a sticky sap from the yellow talk, from the yellow flower head. Um, it's corrosive, somewhat corrosive. Luckily, Vera's armor protected her from the corrosive properties of it, but it will essentially work like a vial of acid. Oh, that's cool. Um, I'll toss it to Mossrock since they seemed pretty stoked about this. Yes! Don't drink it. <laughs> Obviously. 
puts the stopper back in. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and get back on to the map. I told you we wouldn't be going back and forth between. Yeah, once a day is pretty fair. Yeah. I'm, uh... After that, would it be fair to assume that we had received a long rest? Or yes, you all can go ahead and take your long rest now. I just realized that I never had you all make camp. So now you know that if I do put you on the camping screen, it's because you rolled an encounter for the night. <laughs> I was just happy to have an excuse to go set up and fish. Right? <laughs> I didn't see the water, I wouldn't have thought of it. Nice. Okay, so. You have made it to about there. Midday next day, about halfway through your travel, you should make it onto the eastern shore. Um, so. You all can go ahead and take your long rest. And with that, we will move on to day two of your travel. Please, no lizard. We shall see. Depends. Is there a ray of sun for them to bathe in? Yeah. I'm going to keep looking for signs of kobold traps and ambushes and things. Okay. Make a survival check. The 17. Okay. I refuse to be ambushed hmm. by other kobolds. I do the ambushing here. <laughs> you're, you're, you're very intimidating, I promise. <laughs> Tips him over again. <laughs> Alright, Salazar, you do not see any evidence, any further evidence of kobolds. Actually, no. Here where you are. Right here, yeah. Um, you actually do see considerably more. It appears that they use a game path out of the jungle heading through right here. Um, it seems like... It seems like they come up through here. Up through this big game trail right here. Interesting. Up towards the Cobalt Mountains? Up towards Cobalt Mountains, right? Who'd have thunk? Hmm. I never would have guessed. Yeah. I really want to come back here. <laughs> but we do have a job. We can come back. I mean, if we have like a day or two, probably. I mean, they did yeah. say 10 days until we get picked up, right? I think it's going to be just enough time to get there and back. everybody. The next day of your travel does go by without any major incident. You travel for several hours along the beach. You do eventually pass from the jungled beaches down to more mountainous, craggy areas, and you can see that the smoke is becoming rather thick. It makes it a little bit trickier to breathe, but you're still a bit away from the actual volcano site, so it's not too bad yet. You can tell, though, that the closer you get, the harder it will be The harder it'll be to um, survive in that smoke, um, it would be. It would. It's rather thick. Hmm. Well, I don't have to breathe. That's a plus. <laughs> go off. Well, I'm gonna get real hot because I have a uh, chain, but. Um, we've been good on bugs during the day, right? Uh, as long as you're traveling on the beach, right? And now that you have made it a bit farther, it is even easier. There are no bugs here. The fumes and the smoke is keeping them away. So... And then we've also been getting steady rain for the water? Uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. So that actually reminds me. Go ahead and reduce your rations, each of you, for two days. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So, the next day, 
moving on to the following day of travel, um, you all very quickly begin to realize that the smoke is going to be a problem. After about four or five hours of travel into this, I need each of you to make a constitution saving throw with the exception of anyone who doesn't need to breathe the air. Banth? Uh, would a 12 get him a out of that? 12 would save against this. Uh, feel free to take my sessional. Uh, I'll use mine. Okay. okay. So, Banth, you begin to cough. You can see that the air is definitely growing much is growing much more difficult to breathe. It's growing a little almost toxic here. Um, luckily, you are able to power through it, but you do all quickly realize that measures will need to be taken. You will need to save against this every hour that you travel closer to Shilku. Will it help us if we soak some rags or whatever and put them over our faces? Because we're right by the beach. We should be able to... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It would, in fact, give you all advantage on the DC-10 save. Okay. All right. Okay. So... You all have about another day and a half of travel until you actually arrive at the ruins. You are in a rather blasted landscape at this point. You can tell that the eruption of the volcano knocked down, knocked flat everything from where you, from about maybe 10 miles ago to here and then surrounding the volcano. Um, you see lava flows beginning to snake their way down the mountain and all kinds of such things like that to indicate the disaster that happened here. Now, about, maybe about halfway through this day of travel, beach is barren from coast to coast, but you all see something definitely out of place up ahead of you. A lone horse trots up and down the beach, kind of heads towards the mountain, turns around and heads back towards the water, sniffs at the water, turns around and heads back to the mountain. Doesn't seem to notice you all. If you're soaking wet. Anyone else Irish? Just me? Okay. Uh, is there anything that I could roll to try to figure out why this thing was wet like that? Yeah. Sure. You could roll a nature check. Alternatively, a history check. Guidance. What you are. Uh, I guess you could save the guidance. I can also throw it on myself. Well, actually, since you already rolled it, I'll go with yours. Oh, okay. Uh, so 1314, I'm also going to use one of my knowledge from a past life to add a d6 to that. 18? 18. <laughs> okay. So, a scene. You quickly determine that this is not natural. The landscape that it's in, the fact that it's still soaking wet regardless of the heat and the fact that it is now no longer raining, um, you've viewed it long enough to know that it is unnaturally soaked. It's been wandering around on the beach for too long and it's still soaking wet. And as you kind of hold up a hand to stop your group, Try to warn them that there's possible danger ahead. You see a small troop of Batiri goblins burst out from behind a stand of rocks and charge at the horse. They wear large wooden face masks. They hold up nets and spears and wave them around as they charge at this horse. And they all run up to it, throw their net onto it, and begin to grab at it. And you suddenly realize that the goblins are beginning to panic. They are adhered to this horse, almost as if they were glued to it with some impossibly strong solvent. And the horse neighs and gallops off into the water, four goblins trailing behind it, attached to it wherever they first touched it. The horse disappears into the water along with these four goblins. My first instinct is to grab uh, Masra by the arm to make sure she's not running off. I'm going to lick your hand where it's touching me. 
<laughs> I am going to ignore you as I could care less. <laughs> Alright. Um your 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 Irish background came in handy there, Ace. You knew exactly what that was the second you heard wet horse on the beach. Yeah, I was going to say, I knew what that was, too. Oh, we don't touch the Kelpies. No, we no, don't no. touch oh, the Kelpies. It took me a solid no. minute, and I was like, wait a second. No. Kelpies, man. Kelpies. Little scamps. All right. Now, Big fan. Another day of travel goes by mostly uneventfully. Um, we will do, since you all are taking precautions against the hazy air, we'll only do one constitution saving throw um, for the rest of the day. So go ahead and make con saves, everybody. We're doing so at advantage. Fantastic. Okay. Great 18. Let's go, team. Nice. So... Another day of travel does go by. You are nearing your destination. You can see ruins beginning to pop up over the over the horizon. You can see that you're getting closer and closer. However, you do begin to notice steam rising up ahead of you, closer than you believe the city is. A lot of it, like a whole, like a basically a torrent of steam rising up from a bit of a distance ahead, approaching. You see that a large lava flow has obstructed the beach ahead of you all. It flows into the into the seawater, going out several several dozen feet out into the water. You can see the water around it boiling and producing this noxious steam that um, sits about maybe 10, 15 feet off the water, slowly rolls inward. This magma river, essentially, a small stream of magma, is blocking your path forward. Who wants to throw the little people over? Uh, I don't think I control water, do I? Um... How wide across did you say it was? Mm, I will tell you right now. It is... Oh. 20 feet at its narrowest. Is that something Sizzle could do? No. Oh, okay. I think his limit's sure. 15. Oh, okay. I mean, maybe if we get real lucky, we could run and jump. Uh, I know, but I mean, how many no. of us, you know, are trained uh, in athletics is a better question. Thing hook. Yeah. Uh, I was also going to ask, are there any sorts of outcroppings or anything of that nature? Why don't I show you? What in the... I'm just trying to think of, like... If gust of wind can work, only because, hmm, I want to I wanna put this, hold on, I'm just trying to think if that's going to work, only because, like, maybe we, we can, to... maybe we can get across, but what if we turn our, te our tent into a hang glider? I'm you can saying. try that. Uh, Vera, a gust of wind would basically just tumble somebody across the lava. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, if you were trying to murder somebody, that'd be effective. <laughs> well, I have done that well. <laughs> in uh, d, d but... <laughs> murder ponies. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Good All right, time. everybody. It is about 20 past the hour. Let's go ahead and take our break. And when we come back, you all can figure out how to cross this stream of magma. <laughs> all right, everybody. So we are back. You have a 20 foot at its narrowest point stream of magma to cross before you can get to Shilku. 
How do you all proceed? How fast of a flow of magma is It's it? slow. It's moving very slowly. Can I pick up a rock and toss it in there and see how quick it sinks? Sure. Okay. All right. So the rock hits the surface of the magma, it begins to sink in. It takes maybe about three, four seconds until a stone the size of your fist is completely engulfed. Moss, could you try a... a scene, could you roll a d20 for me real quick? Oh, no. <laughs> That's a bad sign. Yes, okay. it is. It's a bad choice. <laughs> All right, nothing happens. Hmm. Question. Mm -hmm. What would the DC be to actually jump the 20 feet? It would be an athletics check. So sometimes when I rage, I can teleport. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to keep getting angry until you can jump it. I mean, she can only ang go angry two times, though. One in eight possibility. I'm, um, uh. On this one, I didn't bring a uh, jump today. I could uh, take a nap and I could get us all across. Oh, are you sleepy, buddy? I feel like Banth could just glide across, but. That's, that's... I mean, if I lay down and then Gust of Wind you up, I mean, you could probably... But that doesn't help the rest of you, right? Yeah. Well, you can take a rope with you, we can secure it, and then zip line. Baby Bob, what's the matter? <laughs> she didn't like the zip line, I guess. Does anybody have a grappling hook? Ban uh, yeah. no. uh, oh. Yes. <laughs> I think Ace does? Yes, I have one. Hey, cowboy. Do you want to try to, like, hook it across yes. the river here and you can just, like, Tarzan yes. your way across? Yes. Like, can I, like, are these, like, these are rock outcroppings on these sides, right? They are. So, can I grappling hook? So, what exactly is it that you're trying to do? I would like to grappling hook up here. Okay. So that I can just, like, whee, my way over. So you're going to stand about here and huck a grappling hook to here? Yes. Okay, yeah. Go ahead and head on over there, and let's make a attack roll. So just roll a d20 plus your dexterity modifier. You know, you, okay, can, you, can, use, you can use your strength. Okay. Wait. Uh, can I, I use my dex, please? Sure. <laughs> it's higher, thank you. Okay. So I'll also toss the guidance on you. Whee! Okay. I'm amazing. I'm amazing. <laughs> it perfectly latches onto a um, onto a rock. It is extra it is very secure. All right. Now, is this a kind of grappling hook where like it reels me in, or do I have to climb? You have to climb. It is not mechanical. I <laughs> okay, I will. I will climb. Okay. Boss is not bad, man. Um, you don't know that. You've never seen them in the same place. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So, what if she is Batman? Can I do an athletics check, or would yes, you prefer yes, something you can. different? Go ahead and make an athletics or acrobatics, whichever you'd prefer. Okay. Uh, Mosra, you are across. Uh, I'm going to, like, triple secure that, that make sure everything is safe up here and be like, all right, let's do this. Okay, so you secure the grappling hook here. So basically what I'm thinking, what I'm seeing is that you have set a grappling hook from here, and it is secured down there, right? Yes. Okay. And if people want to swing, we'll just have to like tie a rock to the bottom so we can put it back where it was. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. 
Um, Banth, you were very correct in your assumption that you could just glide across. You could probably just climb up one of these rock faces and just hop and glide your way across without having to do any checks. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> now, Asim, Salazar, and Vera will have to climb this rope across the lava. That's fun. So, acrobatics or athletics from each of you. I'm going to give myself enhance ability on my dexterity. Oh, yeah. Looking good, I'll Vera. I'm uh, guiding some of myself as well. Okay. Okay. So you make 16. it across. Okay. And then the enhance ability is okay for that one? It is. All right. Fantastic. We all amazing. make it across the magma pool without disturbing the surface, without causing any sort of damage to yourselves, and you are Wait, all across. What if we disturb the surface? Yeah, I mean, that's my question. Would you like to find out? No. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna toss a rock in there just to find out, I mean. Right, that already happened once. Yeah, yeah it was fine. Obviously was nothing fine. is gonna happen. Obviously. So, honestly, so. I was just, honestly, I just staring at Ace. It, honestly, I just uh, tossed it to see if it was going to sink or not. To see if it'd be like, well, can we throw a, can we like throw a few in here and make it across before they sink or something? Like paving stones. Yeah. Before they melt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you know paving we stones tend to do point. that. <laughs> okay. So. Go ahead and head back to the back to the beach map. With the seagulls. All right, everybody. Right immediately faces after the seagulls. Tracks. Uh roll a D twenty. You're kidding. No. Okay. Oh. They're murder goals. You catch one. I just want a giant one to oh, pick hooray. you up and fly away. <laughs> oh my god, those are um, some good moving seagulls. Oh my god. I'm going to bring the dead seagull back to Salazar. The and dead drop it seagull. Feet, like, <laughs> like a golden retriever or a Labrador. Like, dinner! Oh my, you know, the scary thing was one of my dogs the other day got like a dead turtle and it was like... A was turtle? Too... Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, could he get a turtle? Fuck? He was just a dead turtle on the side of the road. I'm like... Why are you bringing this to me? Look what I found. <laughs> um, uh, M Moss Rot would like head pats. Thank you. <laughs> do you want head pats or do you want me to cook you dinner? Oh yeah, definitely cook me dinner. Thank you. I'll pat you on the head though. Excellent. Excellent. Head pats and dinner. Also, I think Moss Rot's about as tall as cells are. Yes. They're, they're Not easy for head pats. <laughs> All right, I guess I'm making seagull right. for Masra tonight. Fantastic. So, you all do eventually make it to the ruined city of Shilku. Um, it is very obvious what happened here. Everything is covered by a thin layer of dust and volcanic ash. Um, you can see that a lot of this place was on fire some time ago. It appears that no one has been through here in quite some time. Domiciles lay vacant. Doors and windows blown out everywhere. The only people that you see are the charred remains of those people. Did the other adventurers that were sent here not make it this far? Um. No. Okay. No. Um, the word would have been that their ship was... Well... Yeah, y'all y'all really wouldn't know exactly what happened to them. They did not make landfall. That much is clear. Okay. okay. Then I guess we're investigating, guys, trying to figure out what... Yep, I'd like to find the wreckage of their ship. Oh, yeah, because I guess they were saying, oh, God, oh, God, what is this? And then it would just cut out from there, right? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So, 
we didn't know we were playing Call of Cthulhu, guys. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't want that badness, man. Call of Cthulhu would be fun. Um, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> Salazar, why don't you go ahead and make an investigation check? Investigation You're still on the shore. Check. You haven't entered into the ruins of the city just yet. That's actually not bad for him. So, 14? Mm hmm Okay. So, Salazar, with a 14, you do see some, some wreckage washed up along the beach. Um... It appears to be relatively recent, maybe about a couple weeks old. But as far as what happened to the boat, with a 14, you're not sure. Hmm. Anything I interesting really wash want, up? Oh, I want to find the vending stone. <laughs> Did anything interesting wash up, Sean? Um, just, uh, just some... Just some chunks of the hole. Things like that. Anything that has the name of the ship on it? Uh, no. Okay. Um, the Lord Commander of the, of the Fleming Fist gave us a bag of holding, is that correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. Um. I'm, uh, I would like to uh, send my familiar to a buy of the city while we're outside of it. Okay. Just uh, to look out for any points. Okay, go ahead and make a perception check with your owl. It's a d20 plus 3, so... Ooh, nice. Uh, that'd be so a... 22. Yeah. So the first thing is that... The first thing that's noticed is that at the center of the city at the very smack dab middle of it. It is still green. You all can't see it from where you're out on the beach, but with the with your owl familiar up there flying around, it is immediately apparent that at the very center of the city there is one section, about five or six square blocks, that is still lush and green. Birds still fly around inside of it. You can see that it appears untouched by the devastation that has ruined the rest of the city. Um, that is the first thing that your owl would notice. In addition, there are dozens and dozens of homes, temples, shops, other such things that were destroyed in the blast. And as your bird kind of dives in low, you can see that everything was perfectly preserved when the volcano went off. Um, destroyed, but still preserved under a thin, under a thick layer of volcanic ash. Was the green area like a square, a circle? Um, it appears to be a rough circle emanating out from a single building at the center of it. Okay. Um, kind of building. With the 22, a seem, I'm assuming you're seeing through your familiar's eyes when this is all happening. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, I am. So it appears to be a temple, a scene. Now, you see something strange out of the corner of your eye. You look away to kind of start looking at the rest of the places around. Make one more perception check for me. Okay, using the bird stats. Yep. Okay. I see nothing. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. So something, something happens in the corner of your eye, but you can't really focus on it in time to exactly catch what it was. Um, it was happening down in that temple area, but no idea what it was. It's a mystery. Hmm. Moss is just, like, tugging on the seam's robe, like, we should go check it out. Moss doesn't know this is hap- this- this- this is happening. Oh, I thought you were telling us as it- well, okay, never mind. I- I- I can't until- I can't until I get back to myself, basically. I- I'm, like, remote viewing through the- through the owl. Okay. Morgan. So, uh, once he gets back, he does tell everybody. Okay, so Why now I'm so? gonna pull on your robe and say, <laughs> <laughs> let's check it out. I mean, we got no other choice, right? I mean, we're here for a uh, week. Took you, well, took you three days to get here. And this is still the same day as the Lava River. Yes. Okay. Well then, uh, I suppose we shall proceed then. 
So, three days to get here. They said they'd be back in ten. Did we try to be sneaky right now? I do have a spell, but... Probably not a bad idea. I can only cast it once today. And what could happen? The look Hank is giving me was so mean. <laughs> I'm just thinking we're going into D and D version of Pompeii. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna cast my one pass without a trace. I got left. <laughs> okay. Yeah, cause I'm gonna need it. Clang clang. Clang clang. <laughs> jingle jingle. <laughs> jingle jingle jang jang. Let's go. Are you happy girl? Okay. So y'all making your way into the city? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. So, you quickly see that there are several buildings, several places untouched. Um, it appears that no one has been here since the disaster. What do y'all do? Uh, are all of this is all the stuff within these places uh, burned up? Uh, no. It appears that it was instantly preserved beneath the ash um so if you head in if you head closer to one of the buildings um you can see that while the blast caused some considerable damage and there is some slight charring most of the stuff does appear to be generally intact un undamaged especially inside of the buildings hmm. were there any magic shops it is incredibly difficult to determine what shops were before the disaster. You can search whichever buildings that you like. There is countless buildings here to search. It would be impossible for you to search each of them. But... Oh, yeah. um, can I use my magical just... awareness? Oh. Try and find some magic? Magic? Yeah. Well, uh, can you toss it up for me? Yes. It's basically like the barbarian's version of the text magic. So uh -huh, 60 uh -huh, feet? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. I will increase your chances of being able to find cool shit. Thanks. <laughs> so, here's how it'll work. Each place has a chance of having cool stuff in it. Each place that you search. Each place that you search also has a potential of having some not cool stuff in it. As in the kind of stuff that could potentially kill you. So, no, it is up to you. Sounds reasonable. Sounds reasonable, right. Um, so, it's up to you how many places you'd like to search, how you would like to search them, how thoroughly. All that kind of stuff. So, Moss, go ahead and roll a d20 first off. Okay. Okay. So, you find a block of shops as you're passing through, just kind of wandering towards the center. I'm assuming you all are wandering towards the center of the place where the place is still alive, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I figured. You get out um, part of the table, you're gonna bang your head. So, as you're heading in that direction, you do come across a block where your magic awareness begins to go off like crazy. Um, let me see. Until the end of your next turn, you know the location of any spell or magic item within 60 feet of you that isn't behind total... Everything would be behind total cover here, boss. Uh, Everything's buried. So... You do sense that there are, there is magical items within 60 feet of you. You have no idea where any of them are. So, you all okay. can attempt investigation uh, checks. Uh, let me, uh, look at something real quick. Sure. If Moss... Hmm. Uh, you did detect some stuff, it's just you're not quite sure where where it's at. Uh, if I can, I will attempt to, uh, I'll attempt to, since I do, I'm back to the tome, ritually cast Detect Magic. Okay. Alright. That's good for up to ten minutes. Okay. So... Go ahead and throw up the text of deck magic for me. Spells. 
smaller range than mosses, but it can penetrate certain barriers. Okay. And it is good for up to 10 minutes. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. So, you head into a domicile. This was clearly a home, having to pull away crusts of this volcanic ash from things, almost like pulling away plaster as you move through doors, into hallways, and you eventually find what looks to be a study, an uh, office room of some kind. You do sense that this item, whatever is drawing you all in, is close by. Let's have a seam. Roll a d20 for this. Just a straight roll. Just a straight roll. Okay. 16. So, you find... Begin digging through into what appears to be have once been a desk, and you pull out a rather ornate-looking horn. Has the head of a lion attached to it. Appears to have been rather stylized in possibly a tribal design from one of the peoples of Chult. It is old, but it is intact. Fascinating. Blow the horn. Uh. And no real riding or anything of that nature on it, correct? No. It has a lion's head, multicolored, very stylized. Uh, anything I can roll to try to see if I know what this is? Roll an arcana check. Uh, I will toss the guidance on top. It of is that. emanating magic. Uh, what school of magic, if you don't mind me asking? Evocation. Hmm. Huh. So a sixteen total. Sixteen. No idea exactly what it is, other than the fact that it is a magical horn that is emanating hmm. evocation magic. Natural well, horn, sure. lion's head, evocation. Um. Well, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna pick it up. I want to see what happens. Well, no, he's the seems got it. Yeah, the seems holding yeah. it. Oh no, yeah. you have it. Never yeah. mind. Um. Yeah. Uh. Would I need to attempt to attune uh, to this item to figure out what it is? Uh, you, if you were to attune to it, um, you, well, no, you would not be able to figure out what it is by spending an hour or two with it. Okay. Identify and, uh, or other such magic would help. Yeah, I did. But other than that, until you've tried to use it, its function is a mystery. And my main reason I'm a little hesitant to just try to use it is since we did have Pass Without Trace going, I'm a little hesitant to start yeah. blowing a horn. Oh, bag of holding thing? Yeah, we'll stick it in there. Okay. We'll put the horn in the bag of holding. I'll put the bag back on my back. Give all the magic stuff to Mossrod. <laughs> shake, shake, shake. Alright, should sure we keep going? At least you didn't eat that one. <laughs> That's true. I'm, uh, I believe so. I'd like to find the biggest looking building along our general travel path to go search there. Okay. Alright. Biggest ones always have the best stuff. Okay. Temples always have gold. Alright. You make your way inside. Let's go ahead and get investigation checks for anybody that's searching. Or perception. Perception would also be appropriate. This is the second building you all are searching. Perception. Oh, very nice. Okay. Well, we're on it. Indeed, indeed. Okay. 
So you enter into this place, and the first thing that you notice is that it does appear to be empty for the most part as far as the bodies of people that had been here. Um, there is one corpse at the entrance. They are splayed out, face first on the dirt, their hands outstretched. Looks like they were blown in through the door. There is a set of thieves' tools nearby. It appears that this person had been holding them. Hmm. I would like to. Oh, can we take those? Hey, Banth, do you need do you need some thieves' tools? Uh, no, I already have some, but thank you. Somebody else can take them if they'd like. Uh, Sarah, I'm gonna pass on thieves' tools. I'm gonna keep them in the bag, shake, 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 just in case someone breaks and stuff. Who? The having a backup is not a bad thing. I have complete faith in your abilities. So, with all of your checks, you can determine that this place was once a temple. Most of the valuables were... are inexplicably missing. Possibly stolen. However, you do find a couple different things. Um, a thorough search of the building reveals a stopper wooden tube containing four gemstones worth 50 gold each. And some decorative vials. Four of them. Each of them worth five gold. Is there nothing in the vials? Uh, the vials themselves appear to have been on display. Okay. Like, decorative. Oh, uh... Hold on, was that guy's extra? Uh... Hector, could you uh, repeat what the idols was were again that we have? Put them in our party manifest. Right. So there was a... A stoppered wooden tube with four 50 GP gemstones inside. And four corked vials. Decorative. They appear to be carved from Aarakocra bone. They are hollow and made of bone, and they are worth five gold each. I'm guessing what we also have is the extra set of thieves tools in there and the lion head on a uh, horn. The magic horn, yeah. And how much were the vials worth? Five each. Well, five vials gold, yeah. Five. Yep. And how many were there? Four. Question about this person. Uh-huh. Um... Uh, do they look like someone who might be native to the area, or do they look like an adventurer? Or like a Go ahead make an investigation check. Because these tools sound like somebody trying to break in. It doesn't sound like somebody who's in the village. You are unsure, I'm going to take my sessional here. Okay, if you want to use your sessional on it, then you can determine that this person was not a native. They appear, your your instincts were on. This person appears to have broken in in an attempt to rob the place and had the misfortune of doing so right before a volcano erupted. Oof. That's suspicious timing. Can't say you didn't try, at least. This is true. Well, uh... Alright, so do you all continue well, searching buildings? Uh... I... believe so. Just so we can see what's around there. Uh, I know it seems is... It seems just kind of curious just because it figures the more complete picture they have of stuff, the better off they are. Okay. Uh, how long does Pass Without a Trace go for? Ten minutes. One hour. Oh, one hour? Okay. So uh, after searching the first building and now this temple, it would be expired. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm getting, I'm getting like Pathfinder and TND spells mixed up. This is fun. <laughs> I think right. it's strange that we have people who aren't from this remote village 
in the village. Yeah. And it's weird timing that they happen to be here when this place was wiped out. I mean, we're in the village and we're not from the village. They can people travel. Yeah, but like, what are the odds that somebody's breaking in, looting a temple as a volcano I mean, erupts and wipes there out? There are people in Pompeii that are like caught mid act, so yeah. it, 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 stuff happens at all times. <laughs> I was gonna say, stranger coincidences have happened in real life, so. Just food for I mean, I, I'm sure you're you're Are making you? a, a very valid point. I just yeah. a, a moss Are, is just like. Eh. <laughs> Are you implying that whichever god this temple was dedicated to took personal offense? Possibly. Um. Rather overkill, but. I'm just saying, we're very far away from any sort of settlement out here. I think it's strange very much, but we have people who aren't from around here in this village when this all goes down. Flaming Fist has kind of been trying to get people out of here for a while, though, haven't they? They've been... They have. Yeah, yeah I guess they have been Flaming Fist, right? I mean... I mean, yeah, they're assholes. They definitely break into a temple. Oh, definitely. But I mean... we're like weeks away from the nearest, like, settled city. Yes. But I feel like Flaming Fist is more like mercenary assholes, not like the assholes that break into your house. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm. Why not both? I'm a little biased, True. but. <laughs> the thing, the thing is, is would the temple itself have enough resources to justify it for them? That's it, Ruthie. You ate all my. And food. also, and also, would they have left this stuff behind? Yeah. Well, that's the other thing is somebody was here and got out because there's nothing in here. Yes. So it's another piece of information to file away. As is, we're gonna have to just continue looking until we have enough to. Mm -hmm. reach a conclusion of some sort. Yeah. Because we can what if this into the... We can what if this all we want to, but at the end of the day, we'd be like any mongrel dog chasing its tail at that point. Yeah, I'm up for searching another one. Okay. Yeah. I was just bringing it up because it seems weird to me personally. Oh, I agree. But it may be something that we can just learn what caused it, or we may never know. It's a big world. There's only so much we can uncover about it. Alright, so if you all want to search another section of buildings, we will need uh, somebody to roll a flat d20 first. Okay. I would do that. Dice gods, smile or frown, or whatever you're gonna do. Okay. And now, you all do come across another section of buildings. I mean, there's there's buildings everywhere, so it just kind of depends on which ones you all wander into. But you do wander into another set. Go ahead and roll investigation or perception checks to see what you all find, if anything. Very good. Okay. Okay. So, Vera... You are beginning to notice a trend. It does appear that some things seem to be missing, as if something was coming in and pulling things out of these out of these wrecks and dragging them away somewhere. Now, you do find a hidden compartment inside of this homestead that appears to have been undiscovered find a jar inside filled with a strange solvent. You said a jar of a strange solvent in it? Indeed. Can I try to identify what's inside this giant jar? You may indeed. Go ahead and make an arcana or history check. Let's do so. I mean, it's either way. I'm going to throw a guidance on top of it, but okay. let's see what happens. All right. 11. Okay. 
With an 11, you are able to discover what it is. It's not anything too insanely out of the ordinary. It is a healing cell. Oh, nice. Oh. Okay. One D four plus one doses of a thick mixture supposed to be only that one. Yeah. Nice. Uh, <clears throat> uh, considering hey. the fact that you are the, I am not sure who would be the one who needs to carry that. Yeah, I was gonna say I could probably add that um to my bag and not tell any of the uh, others. So, as you all exit from that building, after having third searched it rather thoroughly, you begin to see something strange out ahead of you all. It's almost as if the dust was moving with a purpose. A swirl of the volcanic ash rises up, and you almost get the idea of wings inside of it for a moment before it dissipates and just gets taken away on the wind again. After that, it's business as usual. The apparition doesn't last long and it vanishes behind a couple buildings and can... you see no more of it. onward, I suppose. <coughs> Actually, uh, Moss, if you don't mind, do you mind if I recover that horn just because if there were we weird flying things like that coming around, we might be willing to figure out what it does if one gets too close. Yep. So you're just gonna chuck the bag at you. Not chuck it, like, here, catch nicely. Okay. Uh, I slip out the horn and toss the bag back. I'm not sure what it does, but, uh... Find out together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are y'all doing? Uh... Adventure? <laughs> progressing onward. Are you continuing to search buildings? I'd like to. Do you guys think it's taking too much time? Up uh, you we seem, we're just kind of looking into whichever one. I just kind of figure the parts looking through whichever ones catch their attention as we're heading towards the center. Then yes, please. Another building. Okay. This place let's... seems deserted. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah. All right, let's have the same thing. Somebody roll a flat d20, and then all of you can make perception or investigation checks. Oh, roll the d20. Are you trying to waste me? Okay, no, no, go for it. Okay. Oh, God. Perception or investigation checks from everybody. What's a building? Oh, good job, Vera. <laughs> now I get the good rolls, except for when I, you know, Ooh. I almost die of a plant. Vera, as you're going through this next building, you can tell by the decoration, the um, hangings on the walls, various trophies that were taken, lots of taxidermy, that this was the house of a hunter. As you are going through the house, you do find a rotting quiver containing ten silvered arrows. uses arrows in the party. I do. Mm -hmm. Come here. I'm gonna give uh, Banth the ten silver arrows. Alright. As you exit from that building, you all do see what looks to be 
almost like a dragon, except too small, and you can almost see through it in some places. Bits and pieces of it seems to waft away from it. Kind of eyes you. See a pair of small little creatures kind of crawl up next to it. Appear to be almost goblinoid in nature, but these also appear to be made of some sort of smoke or ash being pulled away on the wind. How do you want to react to these creatures? I'm just gonna watch them. Excuse me. I'm just kinda kinda look at them and then carry on and just keep exploring. Like, do they look, does it look like it's... Like, are we seeing something that's already happened? They seem very tangible. They are watching you. Oh, if they're watching us, then Moss is gonna wave at it. Okay. Especially if they're goblinoids. She's gonna be excited. Well, they look goblin-ish. You know, pointed features, things of that nature. But this is so what you all see, looking at you all. They're, they're not as cute as me, is what you're saying. Very much so not. And this is what is in the middle of them. Falcor? <laughs> what the hell? How big is this thing? Um, from where you're standing, it looks to be maybe about 15, 16 feet from claw to nose. Did it disappeared when I waved? No. It kind of oh. makes like a snorting noise in your direction. Vera, as you move to go into the next building, like you were saying, it kind of makes like a deep grumbling noise, almost like the sounds of rocks grumbling together and very pointedly stares at you. I'll stop, then I'll kind of see what it's uh, doing. It continues watching you. Did you dibs on this one? I mean, no. It doesn't respond. It just continues watching you all. Uh, is there any way I could attempt to determine what that is? Make an Arcana check. Okay, I'll slap guidance on top of that. Just so I know what I'm kind on top. Hopefully that's not bad. Arcana. Hmm. Asim, you are unsure. You can tell that it is draconic in shape. Could be elemental in nature, since it doesn't appear to have any tangible form. But you're unsure, specifically, as to what it could be. Um, with a 15, you do recognize the creatures accompanying it as methods, elemental creatures. Okay. I'm picturing I'm... some of these buildings and houses on, like, raised platforms to keep them away from the water. I um... Like to try it. No. Sorry, I, I should have I described it better. You will, This would be relatively farther inland. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah, you wouldn't be on the beach anymore. I was trying anymore. to duck under a house. <laughs> but. Yeah, very much, very much Pompeii vibes. Like, um, okay. yeah. I just don't want to get her and blown away with. Uh, here, this might actually give you a better idea of what you're dealing with. I didn't want to put you on the map, because I didn't want you to assume that you had to fight here. But this is... Vaguely where it is, this thing would probably be over on this structure with these things on either side of it like this. Yeah, I was gonna say, I would probably be over here by the time it was like the start... ...of us. Um... But yeah, like I said, this is just- this is just kind of a visual example of what you're dealing with, so... We'll go ahead and put you back on the beach map for now. But... It does continue to watch you. Ma's gonna put her hand on the door thing again. 
the door thing. Okay. Um, it would grumble. Yeah, like it's a mad. It would grumble and reach one claw forward like it was about to start moving towards you. If you had dibs on it, you didn't say yes. You see its eyes narrow at you, Moss Rot. It snorts and like ashy, ashy embers comes flying out of its mouth, out of its no nostrils. Can Somebody I ask better say if something that understands me in Draconic? Yeah. What do you say to it? Oh, I just... Do you understand me? It doesn't respond in words, but it looks towards you, Salazar. Kind of looks you up and down and gives a brief nod in your direction. Is that your what dad? No, it's not my dad. <laughs> <laughs> my dad got eaten by something about that size. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess I shouldn't have asked. Uh, what should I say to it? Why I'm ask pretty it? Pretty sure it, it, it destroyed this place. Yeah. I'll repeat that question back. It shakes its head and looks up towards the green area towards the center and then looks back towards you. Are you going to stop us if we head that direction? It takes to the air. With two powerful swipes of its wings, it lands right in front of Moss Rot. Alright, I think it wants us to stop touching stuff here. Probably, yeah. It is definitely a protective posture between the building that Moss Rot was kind of standing near and the rest of you. Um... If I start kind of making my way toward, like, the grassy area, does it follow me? Only with its eyes. I think it would let us go there. Yeah. I think it just yeah. wants us out of its space. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your assistance. It snorts at you. A little bit of ember God flies into you. your hair. God bless you! Ah! Asim gives a bow to this creature and slowly walks away, keeping his eyes on it. Bam. Trot puts look. a scene just here to find out what happened. her and it. <laughs> <laughs> we won't touch any more of your things. We're just gonna leave. Don't touch my stuff. <laughs> oh my god. Alright. Guys, that was scary. Yeah, I thought for sure fighting that. Yeah. Good job, Sal. <laughs> We're just lucky it wasn't hungry. And that moss rod didn't, you know, scurry off into that hose. <laughs> I have never done anything wrong in my life, ever. <laughs> Are you sure about that? I'm still here. <laughs> it's fair. <laughs> Alright, let's go to the grassy knoll. <laughs> Did you have to call it that? Did you have to call it that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't I call it that? Is a better question. Some very uh, no, he's, spooky connotations gonna, to it. Sean's gonna put nulls there now, isn't he? You see, this ones. is what happens when you tell a DM like, "Oh God, he's probably not gonna put nulls there, right?" He's, 
He's gonna put Knowles there. All right. So, as you make your way towards the center of the towards the center of the village, and towards the large area that seems untouched by the devastation of the uh, of the volcano of the volcanic eruption, you do begin to smell fresh smoke like burning furniture, burning cloth, plaster, things like that. Something actively burning. And you can see that the that the ambient smoke is seems to not be the only source. At the center of the building, at the center of the uh, at the center of this area, at the temple, there appears to be a enormous fire raging. Smoke billows away from it. anybody like potentially within the fire or let's go ahead and get perception checks okay Ooh, geez they're on fire with the perception checks tonight yeah oh yeah oh yeah it's not gonna do any better than that but i already clicked it so yeah okay so vera as you're kind of examining the fire, you do see something strange. There seems to be some sort of creature running around on top of the roof. You see one, and then another, and then another. There's at least half a dozen of them up there. Small, lizard-like creatures. They seem to be scurrying around and hucking things into the giant bonfire. Hey, we got some, uh, lizards. Um, I think they're chucking stuff there, guys. Now that Vera has drawn your attention towards it, you can see that there are, in fact, several lizard-like creatures pulling piles, pulling from piles of discarded junk and building pieces, and they're all throwing it into the central fire, which is continuously growing. Um, this fire seems to be originating from inside of that main temple complex that Asim saw when you all arrived here. As you're all looking at that, as you're all looking at that, uh, Salazar, you didn't notice the draconic, the ash drake, kind of materialized next to you out of the smoke. It seems to have just kind of solidified out of the ambient smoke in the air until it stands next to you. It looks down towards you and looks back up towards it, and you can just sense the anger radiating from it at the scene that it's witnessing up there. It looks down towards you, towards you, Salazar, and it tries to take a step forward into the area where it's green, and you see it's physically stopped. You can see a ripple of power emanate away. And now that you see this, you can see that the line of where the green and the life starts is solid. It is like a solid barrier um, that separates the living section from the dead section, and this creature cannot get past it. So this is mad because the temple is keeping him away. Or he's mad about, about the smoke of him. I don't know which. Either case. Yeah. Our next step is clear. Let's look. I mean, what if these are the survivors? And this temple's what was keeping the village safe from the volcano. Could be. This is what you all see up there, tossing stuff into the fire. <laughs> I'm a sneaky snack. Yeah, let's go see what's going on. Yep. I'm going Maybe in. You should try to be subtle and sneaky. There's a chance that they're Ooh. not enemies. I mean, it's possible, but... 
I mean, I'm going in though, so. Yeah. We're not gonna know one way or the other standing here. Yeah. I mean, if you want to kiss the asterisk all you want, be my guest, but, you know, I'm not gonna be standing next to it all day. So, heading towards the temple? Yes. Okay. So, as you all approach, there are several different vantage points that you all can see it from. You can tell that these creatures are very thoroughly caught up in whatever it is that they're doing. And you can see if the, you can see from several different vantage points um, that you can look down onto this structure. And you see this. There are several of these creatures almost dancing around the conflagration that is erupting from the center of the temple. They are grabbing whatever they can, and you can see that there's others of them kind of pulling bits and pieces of buildings, even peop even even bodies, from the surrounding buildings and dragging them here and then tossing them into this conflagration. For a brief second, it's almost as if the fire has a face. A gaping maw full of fiery teeth that is just consuming everything that these fire creatures are tossing into it. Can I tell what kind of like ritual they're trying to do? Sure. Go ahead and make an arcana check. Or religion. Religion would also be acceptable. Uh, I'll do guidance and religion. Okay. Nice. Uh, Good start. Uh, five. <laughs> I will do the same but do arcana. Got it. Uh, I got proficiency in both of my intelligence and supply of 10, so it doesn't help too much, but, uh... 22. Hmm, 22. They are trying to summon something. Uh, I relate this to the party. They are trying to summon some sort of creep, some sort of entity. Oh, hell no, we gotta do something. Yeah, we should not coming Is for... the ashtray close enough to, uh, hear what it seems said? Uh, no. You would have left it behind a little while ago. Oh, that's right. We're inside the barrier. I'm sorry. Thank you. Well, let's not let it do that. Yeah. Like, I want to get up there. I want to attack these, you know, snakey snack things and let's uh, have a party. So I'm going to put you all up here. You can position yourselves where you would like to. They are thoroughly distracted. When you all are ready to begin, you can roll stealth, and we will see if you if they are surprised. So position yourself wherever you'd like to. Here, have a drink. Let me find my yeah, owl. There you are. Uh, Where are you going, Ban? Down here. Okay. No. Next to you. Next to you. I'm oh. terrible at stealth, but here we go. Anywhere where the wall is broken is a place where you can climb in. Oh. Okay. So, so like uh, here, 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 and here are the access points. Okay, so kind of up here where you are. Over here then. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here, I'll, I'll go over here so we are we're somewhere so we we're all kind More of evenly dispensed. That. Yeah. I'll go there. Uh, stealth, you said? Yep. Mm. Group stealth oh, check. Here. Disadvantage. Oh. Something tells me that's gonna hurt the curve a bit. <laughs> okay, let me average that out. Uh, mine's still popping up. There we go, 21. Okay. So, we have... A 17, a 1, a 24, a 10, and a 21. That should be pretty decent. 14. Okay, their passive perception is certainly lower than that. It is. Now we will make one active perception check for one of them to see if they notice you approaching. So 14. Um, you all saw that. Cool. 
<laughs> Alright, everybody. They do not notice you all approaching. So with that, we will roll initiative, and you all can kick this off with your round of surprise. Give me one second. I'm putting one kiddo to bed, and I'll be right back. All right. I'm going to roll initiative, but I'll be right back after I roll. Sounds good. She's, she's but it's late. Yeah. No, baby, just routine. Okay, here we go. Sorry, y'all. You're good. It's okay. Bye-bye, baby. Mwah. I just imagine it's Moss crying and she hasn't gotten to hit anything in a while. <laughs> <laughs> he is just a kid in like a little Moss Rock costume. Oh, now there's an idea for Halloween. Right? <laughs> Make each kid cosplay a different uh, <laughs> BD character you've made. <laughs> oh god. That is so many characters. That's gonna be so much hair if I decide to choose even one of my characters. Oh my god. I just want to see one as Mossrod and one as Daisy. Daisy. Hey, River. Can you say Ubu? <laughs> oh no. We're going to get your kid trained on Ubu. Can you say Ubu? Good job. <laughs> All right, everybody. So, Mossrod, you are going to be first. What would you like to do? I would like to rage. All right. That is a six, which is. I am surrounded by multicolored protective lights. I gain a plus one to my AC, and while within 10 feet of my allies, they also gain uh, a plus one bonus to their AC. All right. I am a, I have a disco ball with a protection, uh, or a protection. Okay, I guess I don't need all of their initiatives in there if... So she's gonna rush this one over here. And... Hit it with her meat opener. Awesome. Eight does not hit. You know, I'll use my sessional. Fourteen does not hit. Go ahead and save it. Oh. Okay. okay. Right, Asim, timing is good. You are up. Um, uh, what Asim is going to do is, uh, if he's familiar, perform a flyby and give him the help action on this one. And then move a little bit off. And then he is going to fire. He's going to, uh, Fire that blast of Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast, you Uh. 10 is no good. I used my 16 I hits. I used my session all yet today. Oh, I think you did. You gave it to somebody, right? I, no, no you tried I tried to. Oh, okay. I tried to, okay. Yeah, yeah we'll we take the 16. Oh. Oh. Which one were you shooting at? Uh, this one. The, the one to the, the uh, right. Got it. Right. Okay. Anything else? Uh, uh, Seam is going to activate his, uh, well, I should. Uh, Seam is going to act. Oh, crud, should have. Uh, I'll save that for next time because I forgot to do it. I should have done it to start with. Hey. Salazar. But, uh, Salazar, wait till next time. <laughs> Salazar is going to cast Shillelagh. Okay. Lighting his torch up. Nice. And give a run and a jump and try to smack this one right in front of him. Okay. Big box. 24, 24 hits. For 7 damage. Fantastic. Big box. And that is going to be turned. Vera. Alrighty, the classic. I should probably get out the symbol I'm using for a spiritual weapon as I'm gonna bonus action. 
uh, cast it and then bonk uh, this guy right here. Okay. I doubt 11's gonna hit, though. It does not. Uh, I will still... Where you put your spiritual weapon? Uh, yeah, right there. Okay. Um, I'll move myself right here just in case uh, Lizard Man tries to move up anywhere. I'm gonna end my turn. Okay. Ban. Alright, I will use Assassinate on oh, this damn. guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I have advantage on my attack rolls, and in addition, if you surprise any hit, the score is pretty good. Nice. And I will right here. Sixteen hits. Uh, so how do I add on crit damage for that? Um, so go ahead and roll it. Roll the regular damage. And then roll another d8. Okay, and then how many sneak attack dice do you roll? Uh, just one, I believe. Let's check that out real quick. I think you roll more than one at level three. I think it's two d6. I think it's two. Oh, yeah, it's two d6. Okay, so roll four d6. Okay, so that is a total of 21, 27 points. Banth comes up from behind this this fire newt thing and runs his rapier right up from its back and out its chest and it does die off of that. Assassinate indeed. And that's the turn. Moss Rot. We are back to the top of the initiative. These newts seem to be acknowledging what's happening to them. They all draw fiery scimitars. That's an unfortunate choice. Um, I am still a disco ball, and I am going to go with the glaive again. Nice. Anna, I will have that spiritual weapon set up for you by next session. You got yeah. it. Yeah. Bob does yeah. not hit. Big ol' miss. Uh, I'm going to use Nimble Escape and GTFO out of immediate. Reasonable. <laughs> All right, a seam. Uh, I am going to activate one of my, going to use one of my forms of trade. So, get a D10 plus three temp hit points. Seven, not bad. And, uh, I am going to, uh, my familiar is going to fly back, do that little fly by help action against that one, and, uh, I'm going to fire my Eldritch Blast at him. Eldritch Blast. Yeah. Jeez, the rolls are, not going to hit. rolls are not looking good tonight, y'all. No, they are not. I don't know. Such a bad luck Band did pretty thing. good. <laughs> right. Okay, he might that be was our... in the party. <laughs> oh my gosh, imagine two P two TPKs in one, in one like week for her. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just a bad luck charm. I'm just the person that causes these TPKs, man. Cursed. Cursed. Don't Curse you! We can't have that in a uh, Avernus. No, no, no. Hey, I'm not there, so. <laughs> and I'm oh, saying, my... don't bring that to our game. The residue. Um, I'm gonna Dan gonna House and curse you, man. <laughs> There's another swing at the one in front of me. 17 hits. 17. For. Another 7. Another 7. A couple big old bonks. It's okay, I'm just. Just have to get. The bat where I'm just have to get the bad rolls out of the system for everybody. <laughs> well, let's hope so. We're just gonna keep swinging on these guys until, uh, 
someone stops. I think that's going to be turned. Okay. I don't have anything for the bonus. These salamanders, these fire newts, these strange lizard fire things all throw their hands up in the air and let out a little undulating high-pitched battle cry before charging at each of you. This one moves to right here. I need each of you to make dexterity saving throws as these little creatures run up to you, take in a deep inhalation, and spit out a glob of magma at you. Monster, I need you to make two of those saves. So wait, each of us has to make a dex save? Each of you has one of them on you that is spitting fire at you. Moss has two of them that oh are doing God. so. Oh, God. Well. Hello, well. Hello, 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 hello. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my past life thing to try to uh, make that better than a... Uh, thank God. So what is it? Mind. Okay. That at so, least gives me a 14. That at least gives me a decent chance of missing it. <laughs> you all do succeed, meaning that each of you takes half of the number rolled. So we'll roll one for each of you. So Moss, we'll go with you first. So, oh, good thing you take half of that. So you take five. And then four, so you take nine points of fire, Moss. Okay. Asim, you take six. Salazar, you take four. Vera, you take four. Banth, you take three. That is their turn. Vera, you're up. Um, I'm going to do a bonus action to move my spiritual weapon up to the salamander that's next to me, and I'm going to bonk it. Okay. Big bonk. Come on, bonk. 16 hits. 10. Ten fours. Nice. And that's gonna be my turn. Man, you're up. Alright, I will move up to this one. And right here. Eighteen hits. Five piercing. Alright, alright. And that's me. Moss. Um, I'm going to be reckless, and I'm going to attack. All right. Mm. Oh, come on, dude. 13 is no good. Unfortunate. I am going to nimble away. Okay. A scene. Uh, I'm going to direct my familiar to fly down here to give Vamp the help action. Okay, fantastic. So give Vamp advantage. advantage. Yep. Uh, then I'm going to scroll down to here. Thank you, sir. And What am I doing? a little different. Hold on. It's it doesn't let me keep folks out of it, so I don't know if that would work or not. Actually, question on this area right here, right on the edge. No, he would still be too close. Okay. Uh, Did you just answer your own question? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to take an opportunity attack from that one. Okay. It does slash at you with its scimitar. A 22 to hit for six slashing. Uh, that will hit. Um, uh, so let me take that off right quick. Uh, basically... Get some of my temporary hit points and... Hits me right there. Okay. Uh, and what I do is, is I get there 10 feet away from both that one on the two that are equal distance from me. Yeah. There is a... As a former Dread is active, it still looks that way, but uh, some of the wrappings and the like start to peel away. 
Nice. And seem to lash out with... Almost with a mind of their own. As, uh... I basically cast my variant on... Uh... Arms of Hadar, which is Ooh, what nice. I titled Necrotic Raps. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, Arms they of Hadar. Have to make a, both of these do have to make a strength saving th DC of... 12. Which ones? These two? Uh, yes, the two closest. Uh, the two closest to me. The one okay. north Got of it. me and the one... Yeah. Yeah, it's a radius from self, so... Radius from self, yep. perfect, okay. DC? Yep. 13? What's the save? Uh, strength. strength. Damage? Uh, it'll be 3d6. Okay. Go ahead and roll it up. Okay. For six, how oh, well. Half on six. But they also... Yep. And if they fail, they also okay. cannot take reactions until their next turn. Okay. Okay. They both succeed, unfortunately. Oof. Oh, well. Well, uh, well, I tried. Oh, well. Okay. Uh, I'm just just check one more thing right quick. Sure. I think it has to be an actual thing I make an attack roll. Uh, Have to make an attack roll so that that other part does not apply yet. Okay. So okay, that's my turn. Salazar. Uh, we're just gonna take another swing at this one and hopefully finish it. Twenty-two hits. Twenty-two. Nice. Eight does Eight take him down. Crack that one across the head. I think we're actually just going to sit tight here for now. Okay. So, continuing their high-pitched, unulating battle cry, each one is going to charge at one of you. One there. That one is right in front of you, Vera. <laughs> Masra, this one's going to run screaming at you. And it looks like everybody has one scimitar tech in their way. Masra, a five to hit. A seam. A 19 to hit. That'll hit. Five slashing. Salazar, an 11. That'll Vera, miss. it's a 15 to hit. That's a miss. Banth, you're looking at a 13 to hit. It's a miss. All right. So, here we go. Vera, you're up. I'm going to come back at it, grab my spiritual weapon, and then bonk it on him. Okay, 18 hits. Nice. All right. Eight, all right. Um. Uh, don't don't just get a regular weapon attack. Yeah. No, because I mean, I'm pretending to use my spiritual weapon to bonk it. Oh. Uh, uh, spiritual weapon bonk is a bonus action, so you do have your regular action still. Yeah. Oh, I still have that. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I keep forgetting. Yep, yep, yep. No, because is, isn't it just an attack? Because I was going to no, say... No, it is a bonus action to attack a spiritual weapon. Oh, okay, yeah, I have not played Cleric in a long time. You could probably tell. I um, mean Clerics. <laughs> like, I haven't played Clerics yep. in every game I play. All right, I see the one that's the seam since he's taken some serious damage, and I'm going to cast Toll the Dead on it. Fantastic. The one that's got a seam. Okay, wisdom save from it. Wisdom saving throw um, result from the new is a seven. Um, it's taken damage, right? It has, so it is a d12. Only four. Four, okay. But that's yeah, gonna be my damage. turn. Yeah. Banth. All right, so right here is the guy here, and it will be a 
sneak attack because of she's owl. Rapier, 17 hits. Oh. For 16, does take him down. Oh, nice. All right, and that's me. Okay, Mossrot. Uh, Mossrot's feeling some kind of way right now because she's missed every hit. <laughs> She's going to like recklessly like jump up and like try to smash this thing with her glaive on the way down. <laughs> up, scimitar. Everything's no. awful and I hate it here. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I think my bad luck has rubbed off on you. I'm sorry. She's gonna like roll and nimbly escape. <laughs> okay. Anything else, Moss? Uh, crying's a free action. Crying is a free action. A scene, you're up. Uh, he is, as a bonus action, going to burn his second use of that thread just to get him some temp HP. Okay. Hmm. Ten hit temporary hit points, that's nice. Not bad, not bad. I going to say, that kind of has me around normally in that. If you add that to my normal hit points. Uh... <laughs> Please don't die, Hank. Uh, since he's that close, obviously. Well, the thing, the problem is, is that Eldritch Blast to be a disadvantage with him being within five feet. Wait. But if he's close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I don't think that Burning Blood, and obviously the. Green flame blade is not a good option. So, I mean, you don't want to use fire against the thing that's on fire. Eh, I probably should have <laughs> done some different use of former dread, but because casting this thing does require a bonus action, and so does former dread. So, I think we're just gonna try to regularly stab this. Stab. Come on, spit it up. It's thinking. Slowly but Come on now, Billy Bob. It's counting with its toes. Apparently so. I'm just going to try to reach <laughs> it over here on the character sheet and see if that works better. Hey, 20 hits. Hey, actually hit with a dagger. Four piercing, all right. Four it's okay, I got something for him if it's still around next time. Okay. Salazar. Um, I think we're just gonna stick with Old Reliable here. Shillelagh Bonk! Keep whacking with Shillelagh. 19 hits. 19 will hit, awesome. 10? Jeez! Packing a wallop with what that like stick. like hit things? Is it nice? <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice. <laughs> I am going to wrap around this one, though, just to get a little closer to a seam in case something happens. All right. And that will be turn. Okay. High pitch oh. shrill shrieking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Vera, nine to hit. That's a miss. Salazar, 22 to hit. That'll hit. Four slashing. A seam, 10 to hit. Moss rot. That misses. 21 to hit. Yeah, that'll do it. Five slashing. Halved to two. You're up, Vera. Warhammer bonk in the head. Bonk. Uh, I don't have my sessional. 11 does not hit. Uh, Spiritual up and bonk. Oh, Never no. mind. <laughs> Just us. Just get me out of here. Get me out of here. Man. <laughs> Bamps just has salamander bodies around him. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over, buddy. <laughs> yeah, uh, and that's all I can do. Okay, Moss. Or I guess, uh, no, I, I can chew with a bow, I guess. You can. 
Can indeed. And you would have sneak attack as there is somebody next to it, but unfortunately it does not give you advantage, so nine yeah. does not hit. Cool. That's me. All right, now we're on Moss. So Moss is just like <laughs> visibly like like angry tears. <laughs> hey! Oh, 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 hooray! And you hooray! <laughs> you did it! Yay! I see a one in that roll. Go ahead and re-roll that. Oh, wait. Okay, no, no, just uh, just, just re -roll yeah, just a roll a d10. Yep. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Okay, you got too excited to get it. There we go. So six, so 15 points. Not bad, Moss. Hooray! And then she's going to, like, nimble over here. I'm not sure where they have to nimble, does she? Because she's going to keep... We're going to flank. Me and Banth. Okay. Seam. Uh, Piss Familiar is going to... 20. Basically, the help action... On the one that Bear is dealing with. Uh, the seam on that knife he just used, a couple of words fall from his lips as he cast um, a Shadow Blade upon it. Oh, nice. And if I recall, it just uses the same attack as. Yes, yeah, so it'll be the weapon which you're proficient. Which, it's okay, so basically it's the same thing as okay. stabbing with my dagger, just instead of regular damage, it's 2d8. 13 is no good. I don't think a 13 is going to work. 13 does not do okay. it. Okay. Well, son of a gun jumped out of the way. Uh, that's my turn. Salazar. We're going to do another uh, Shalili Bonk. The bonk. That one will miss. Seven is no good. Uh, here goes my perfect streak of hits. <laughs> the monster rot. <laughs> Boss, do you need me to teach you how to fight? The audacity. The audacity. That'll be <laughs> turn though. All right. Is it hot in here? <laughs> here we come. Salazar, four to hit. A seam, 13. Moss, Miss. 22. Yeah, that'd do it. Seven slashing. And Vera, nine. That's a miss. That brings us to you. Uh, spiritual bonk. Spiritual bonk does not hit. Oh, does uh, uh, is the owl giving advantage? Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, he's attempting to. Okay, spiritual bonk hits. Uh, spiritual bonk. Down he goes. Uh, then I'm gonna hold the dead the uh, salamander thingamajiggy on a uh, seam. I mean, that's spiritual weapon. You have to hold the dead. Okay. So it's a wisdom, wisdom save. save. Result is a 17. It does succeed. Never mind. I am just gonna move up here and I'm just gonna end my turn. Man. Do you wanna be in the corner of shame with me? Banth is already in the corner of shame, so. Yeah. Not so much shame. 22 hits. Stacking bodies. <laughs> yeah, right? Doing rogue shit. That does take another one down. I, I, I loosened it for you. <laughs> Thank you for the assist, Moss Rot. <laughs> All right, Moss, you're up. Uh, Moss Rot's going to. Let's see how far that is. Not very far. It's like, okay, I'm gonna. Thanks! Runs over here and just, like, stabs it. <laughs> 23 hits! <laughs> oh no. Oh my god. <laughs> Good job, I'm Moss. Too little. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Seam. Um, 
from uh, my familiar is going to go up here to give a solid punch. And I'm going to step to the side and we're going to try to stab with the shadow blade again. Okay. 15. 15. Does not hit. Oof. Ah, oh, well. I never pretended to seem really. I never pretended to seem was a brawler. <laughs> All yeah. right, Sal. Uh, that is my turn. <laughs> All right, we will take the big bump. Hopefully, finish this one off. Fourteen's no good. Jeez, the misses are coming in hot. We're gonna sidestep over here, and that will be turn. Okay. Scurry up the rocks a little bit. Newts. A seam, 18 to hit for three slashing. And. Uh, that hits. Vera. Alright. It's a nine to hit. Big miss. You're up. Yep. Uh, okay. First point of order bonus, bonus action. Move my spiritual weapon up and bonk with spiritual weapon with bonus action. This is exactly 20 feet. Oh, never mind with Bonk. Uh, Warhammer Bonk. Hey, there you go. Cool. Uh, seven bludgeoning. Seven does take him down. Awesome. Uh... No, that's not the select move. Uh... I'll move over here, then my turn. Okay, Banth. Okay, I got a question about... You said... You said it earlier that it looked like there was like a maw in the fire. Yes. What is what what is happening there now? Is there if you were to there? look over the edge and at the fire, you would see what looks like a monstrous face trying to consume something below it. You can use your bonus action to make a perception check if you'd like to. Yes, I will do. Banth, there is an altar beneath this conflagration, this conflagration with a face. It is gnawing on it, chewing on it, slashing at this altar. It seems to be resisting all the heat that is being laid into it. You can see burnt materials surrounding it as if these newts were piling things onto that altar in an effort to destroy it. The fire has some sort of terrible life to it as it is doing, as it is undergoing this task. Don't like that. No. Um, okay, I will obviously yell this information to the rest of the party. Um, well, I guess since there's still one, come try and finish him off. 20 hits. Okay, that does take him down. We will drop out of initiative for now. What do y'all do? Uh. Um, knowing what I hear from Banth, I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to Guiding Bolt it or not. Well, if we want to attack it, I do still have my Shadow Blade up. We can throw it in there at it. I mean, I guess, yeah, I can throw my spiritual weapon in there, maybe, and then we'll see if, uh... I have a javelin? Well, whatever it's doing is good, so, uh... Let's... Whatever it's doing, I don't like how this is, so let's try to get rid of it. Yeah. So what do y'all do? Spiritual weapon, since I still have it. So you attack it. Each of you go ahead and make one attack. One ranged okay. attack okay. into the conflagration that you choose. Okay, I'm throwing my spiritual weapon down there. My not my shadow blade in there, and it should reappear. Okay. Can I use my additional, please? 13 hits. River, if that ball hits the ceiling, we're going to have an issue. Wait, 13 oh. hits. You can give your initiative to Vera for a 19 if you'd like, Moss. 
Oh. Uh, okay. I got a twenty. So far, all of you have hit. Oh, I got... I'm missing one. Looks like Salazar needs to yeah. toss something I in there. I don't actually have a great. Okay. Range so each of you roll damage. I don't suppose anyone has a uh, sessional that I could use for that 25, do they? No, I gave mine to a uh, Banth earlier. Oh, wait! Wait, he said my 13 hit, so I have mine. Take it. Okay, that means 48. Okay, so that would mean that would mean that Vera didn't hit. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, 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 no I'm sorry. I realized, I'm sorry. Yeah, take, no, Vera, don't worry. Vera, Vera took mine. I'm sorry, Sean. Okay, so we've got 11. We've got uh, 16. Then let me do the... 24. And 28 oh, points. Girl. Okay. So. 28. All right, everybody. So. The fire stops. It literally stops moving. Freezes. Almost as if it was frozen in time for a brief moment. The face that was facing away from you all morphs through the body of the flame to face you all and stare right at you with an incredible malice. The mouth opens and in a deep rumbling voice the flame speaks to you. It says, insignificant mortals, you dare interrupt. It then begins to grow in size and intensity. The maw reaching up towards you all. It says, I will consume each of you, and then I will finish laying waste to this fragment of Ubtau, and this city will be mine. Oh my god. The being erupts from the central fire. And we'll pick up here next week. Oh. <laughs>